Hello everyone, it's Chelsea from Paper Octio Studio. Today I'm sharing with you a mixed media wedding card that I made to match the bag that I showed you on um, two days ago. Was that Monday? <laughs> on Monday there was a bag that I used for a wedding gift, remember? If you didn't remember, I will put it in the information card up above where that little eye circle thing is in the upper right corner you can click on that and it'll give you the video of me making the bag this is the card that I made to go along with it for the wedding that I'm going to this weekend um, I've been having a lot of fun doing these projects I haven't really been very motivated to do much of anything in art lately and having the opportunity to go to a wedding which I haven't been to one in probably I don't know 10 15 years <laughs> um, everybody that I know already got married had kids all that stuff so um, I've just been having a lot of fun with this I I don't know if the couple will realize that the stuff that I made is art um, if they'll keep it if they'll reuse it I don't know I don't know but I've been just been having fun it doesn't really matter so um, I found a pre-made card and envelope that I had in with all my envelopes that uh, was kind of an off-white color and I thought that went along with the the earth tones and uh, neutrals that are on the bag and so I decided to use it and um, I decided I wanted to make a little illustration of a bride and groom because that just sounded fun for the front of a card so I got this piece of 140 pound cardstock that is an off cut from when I made uh, my my life 2017 journal I cut the paper into a square and so since the paper started as a rectangle I ended off with all these um, these uh, off cuts that are three inches wide so I knew that I was going to color this with watercolor so I decided to do my illustration on this piece of three inch wide it's probably like three by nine or something piece of watercolor paper so I started out using my mechanical pencil <clears throat> excuse me with the soft lead in it it's got uh, to be lead in it and it's a graphite and so I made my little drawing illustration with that <clears throat> excuse me <laughs> I don't know why every time I start to do a voiceover I get this weird stuff in my throat it's driving me crazy it's just crazy and then once I was fairly satisfied with my little drawing I got out my illustration pins these are pit pins um, from Faber Castell so they are permanent they they don't run or anything you can go over them with watercolors or any other type of type of water soluble media and they'll just stay put so they're perfect for doing this type of an illustration that I'm going to then color in with watercolor so I'm using the extra small and the small pins to start out with and going over all my lines <clears throat> and then later I'll come back in with my medium and add some more line weight just to make the drawing more interesting um, it's just something that I like to do I don't know I recommend it so I have my little bride and groom and uh, she has a floral bouquet that she's holding and I have no idea what color the wedding is <laughs> I I know we got an invitation I can't find it and so like I, I can't coordinate this to what the what it's actually gonna be what the colors of the wedding are I don't know so I did go and get um, print out some pictures from the venue because I wanted to make a background as well and I know that the weddings at this place so I just got these pictures from their website that shows kind of the red buttes in the background um, somewhere on the property there's different cactus and stuff so I decided to draw in the background using the red buttes and then a little saguaro cactus on the side so this is the point where I'm oh, I guess I'm still working on the background I haven't started back in with the uh, medium pin yet to do the line weight sorry I thought that's what I'd gotten to but <laughs> not yet I guess um, so I, draw, I go over the lines of the background drawing as well and then I'm just uh, 
coming back in with the heavy pin now. This card did take me a while because I did make an entire drawing and painting and then I did a collage on top of that. But I was just having fun, you know, just a lot of fun. I don't know. I haven't made an illustration in a while, as you guys who watch my channel probably have noticed. <laughs> I haven't drawn anything in quite some time. So see how the drawing gets so, so much more dynamic when you start throwing in those heavier lines? That's what I was talking about. Um, I don't know. I didn't ever take like a drawing class or learn how to draw. This is just from practice. So this is just how I do it. And I'm not sure that I'm breaking if I'm breaking any rules or not. But that's just the way I like it. And then, of course, I signed it on the side there. Then I got out my uh, Koi watercolors from Sakura and I've been enjoying these lately just messing around with them and you can make pretty much any color that you want with this basic set of colors. I think there's 18 colors maybe or something. I don't know. Anyway, been playing with them lately and I like them a lot so um, I will link them down below the video in case you want to order some from Amazon. Um, if you do order from Amazon, please use my link because it helps me out on my channel. So I'm starting out uh, coloring the Sorrow Cactus and I did a like a wet on wet with that. I put clear water in first and then dabbed in the color. The same with the top of the background. And then I just start uh, blending it all down without wetting to kind of um, vary the, the tone of the color, the shade of the color, not the tone. But I do end up darkening that back up again. The thing with watercolor is that you layer it. So you start out with your first layer, then you go and put more on top, and you go and put more on top. And you can really get a very dynamic look that way. Um, I didn't go crazy with this. I pretty much was just coloring, but I did go back in and add a few more layers on the top. I wanted this sky to be really light. I didn't want to have uh, really bright blue on this project because there's not blue anywhere else, really. Um, blue is not part of this. It's not a neutral. So I wanted the sky to just have barely, barely a little bit of blue. I wanted the ground to be a different color than the background. So I didn't continue that um, iron oxide red color coming all the way down. I wanted there to be a little bit of a difference between the, the ground that they're standing on and the background. We didn't want it to be complicated. I didn't want to try to add in a bunch of other plants or greenery in the background like some of the pictures. I wanted it to be um, pretty simple so that the illustration of the couple would be the thing that you saw when you looked at it. So that's the reason I didn't add any detail in that background area right behind them. Didn't put anything in there. I could have put some more plants or something, more cactus or something, but it's not what I wanted, so I didn't. So I'm just continuing to add a few more um, layers of color there on the background, and then I start in on the couple. Of course, her dress is white, because wedding dresses are white. <laughs> so I'm just using a very, very, very watered down of the black, which is, you know, just a gray, basically, with lots and lots of water. Um, that's how you make different tones with watercolors, is the amount of water that you include in with your mixture. So it's just a real, real pale gray to add in some shadows where the, the uh, fabric would be folded over on itself and stuff like that. Because otherwise it just looks too flat. It doesn't look um, like folded fabric if it's just all white. And then I started in coloring the flowers. At first I thought they were going to be orange. Then I thought they were going to be pink. And then I ended up throwing in some red. 
Um, they're some kind of a variation of a warm color. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so I made his uh, tuxedo black because I like the contrast of a black suit against a white dress. But um, when I first put on the black color, it's you can't see the detail of the drawing anymore because it's all so one color. So then I go back in with just a wet brush and I add highlights by adding water to places that I want the color to be lightened. So it's kind of the opposite of putting in dark and then blending it to light. This time I put the entire thing dark and then blend it out with just plain water to just lift out some of the color so that you get um, as if the light is shining on the suit and the suit is shiny, you know. You know what I mean? That's just something that I learned about watercolor messing around so that you can take it off. You can never really take it all the way off to white, but you can lighten it. Which is kind of the opposite of doing acrylic because on acrylic if you want a lighter spot you put a lighter color or you add in white and then you blend it in um, on top whereas with watercolor you better already know where your highlight is going to be before you even start putting the color on there and if you do have to lighten it then it's going to be with water in the same way that I just did so it's kind of fun and different so then to make skin tone I used um, some of the kind of a peach color but then I blended in a little bit of the dark yellow which would be like a yellow ochre and then the uh, I guess it would be raw sienna which is kind of a reddish brown um, blending those together with some water the bride is uh, from Colombia so I was trying to make her skin a little bit more of like that cocoa color like um, coffee with milk that's my favorite color of skin I wish my skin was that color I'm so pink I wish I was that color but then the uh, groom I had a little bit of trouble with him because he's a lot more pale so I was trying to make him pale but also he's doesn't have a lot of hair on his head um, you know and I just I didn't know how to make that I didn't I didn't know what to do with the top of his head. I wasn't sure. I mean, if if you're completely bald, then I guess the top of your head would have a big highlight on it. And I don't know. <laughs> he won't ever watch this um, video. They won't ever watch it. So they can't hear the commentary of my struggles with trying to figure out how to paint a bald person uh, without, like, saying hey he's bald you know look at this drawing he's bald you know <laughs> yeah so then I had all out all these other different papers and materials that I thought I might use on the card and so I'm just uh, spending some time messing around figuring out what I'm gonna do and I decided to just use a craft colored card instead of the vanilla colored one um, matches the bag better because the bag was a craft colored and I've got some dictionary pages that's Latin I've got some of that deli paper that I used to clean up the stencil that I used on the bag I thought maybe I would throw that in um, this napkin has some music on it and I thought that looked kind of cool it had this same kind of off-white background I got out a couple different napkins but I just thought that the I didn't want I didn't want the design of the napkin to compete with the drawing that I just spent all that time drawing so um, the, this uh, other thing that I just cut up and tore is a wine label that my friend Dawn sent me um, she sent me a whole bunch of different wine labels she's like I'm looking forward to seeing what you do with these so far I haven't really found that much of a use for them yet but um, I liked that one the, the painting that was on it I thought it was the right colors and tones and so I wanted to use that little piece of it and then I ended up using a couple pieces of the brown with the uh, printing on it too just to add a little bit of balance to my collage so to stick all this down I'm using my Liquitex 
matte gel medium, which is kind of like a paste um, to stick everything down. It does. I didn't. I didn't want something really super wet as as a glue. I wanted everything to be thoroughly stuck. I didn't just want to stick it down with you know tape or glue or something and have the edges flopping around it. I wanted it to be like a real collage where everything is stuck down. But I didn't want a really wet glue because this is cardstock. It's just plain old cardstock, and so it's going to buckle. And it did buckle just a tiny bit, but I'm just going to sit it under a book, and it'll be it'll flatten back out fine. So I'm just sticking down all my little pieces um, to make an interesting area there on the side to make it look kind of like the bag with a kind of a linear collage with some different materials but similar. Then my final piece that I remembered I had was this paper doily and it really like when I put that on it was like okay that's what I was looking for. <laughs> Until that point I wasn't very happy with my collage but the doily was the perfect um, complement to the dress. You know it kind of gives you that same type of effect as a wedding dress, lace, whatever. So then I just use my um, pit brush pins in a couple different colors of brown um, to add a little bit more shading and interest to my collage by just going around some of the edges and then blending with my finger. This is an India ink so it stays wet just for a couple seconds long enough for you to blend it and then once it's on there it's dry it's permanent because it's India ink so just add some more interest more visual interest for with a little bit of shading then um, I did back my my illustration with some copper paper and it's so it's a nice shiny metallic copper imagine that me using copper you, you would never guess that would you <laughs> and I decide to attach it using some foam tape so that it sticks up a little bit from the background like it makes it kind of look like it's a separate element so I put that on peeled it off and then now that's kind of standing out a little bit and then to add more dimension I've got some of that same hemp twine jute I guess it is not hemp and a couple paper flowers I found my box of paper flowers it was missing but when I was looking for my box of dictionary pages because to look for the Latin ones um, I found <laughs> I, in addition I found the paper flowers and then to finish that off I just added one of those same uh, kind of goldy coppery colored uh, stick on gems in the middle I like it I like how it turned out so then finishing touches I went back in with my white Posca pen and added a few highlights um, in their eyes and just around the dress and things like that and I did end up adding a little corsage, a little white corsage on his lapel because I forgot that until this point. And since the Posca pins are opaque, they can go over the watercolor and it won't bleed through or anything. I also decided that her dress needed a little bit of like, like maybe it had some little rhinestones or something to make it a little bit shimmery or shiny. So I got out that silver sharpie the water based sharpie and just put little dots some little dots and in the close up she'll be able to see the effect of it from this distance you can't really see it but I thought it worked out pretty well and I got back out the extra small pin just to um, reinforce some details on the eyes because they just needed that a little bit and I think, oh yes, then I thought, oh, I can go over the whole dress with Wink of Stella. This is a um, um, really, really super fine glitter in a pen form, in a brush pen. So that turned out pretty cool. I do love Wink of Stella. <laughs> and then I had put some white highlights in her hair, and I decided 
that I didn't like it. So I went back in with a brown. And so now it's like black hair with brown highlights, which is better. So I hope you've enjoyed this. And that's it for me for today. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.